good afternoon everyone and uh, uh, welcome to the session uh, just very quickly uh, kind of differentiate rooftop from the grid scale uh, segment most of the work that's happened in the country today is in the grid scale plants and uh, Though we are both using solar technology and pretty much it's the same solar photovoltaic, the industry is almost very different when it comes to the rooftop scale versus the grid scale. Firstly in terms of size and even when I am talking of rooftop, please note I am only talking of commercial and industrial scale. I am not covering the domestic sector here. Uh, for us average size is 200 kilowatts and uh, of late we are seeing that the average size of lots being bid is 200 megawatts in the grid scale plants. In terms of supply, the grid scale plants are feeding directly into the transmission network. The way we have structured the rooftop segment in India, the primary consumption is on site. That is the model which we are perpetuating, unlike Germany where everything which is even on a rooftop is being put into the grid. What is great about the rooftop segment versus the grid, obviously you, you get huge economies of scale when you are setting up grid scale plants and large capacities at one point, one of the best things in the rooftop segment, there are no transmission losses. There are a few others which I will just talk about in a bit, but there are absolutely no transmission losses. In terms of challenges on the grid scale, there is land acquisition, power evacuation. Now both of these challenges have almost been done away in the last two or three bits that we have seen. Land has been provided and uh, in the Reva bit, I believe evacuation is 400 meters or something from the solar plant. Some of our rooftop sites we do 400 meters evacuation. So those challenges have got mitigated. In the On the rooftop side there are more challenges that are remaining and I am hoping that you know the next time we stand and speak here some of these will also have been done away with. Customer acquisition is a huge challenge. It takes 4 to 6 to 8 to 10 to sometimes 15 months from when you start talking to a customer to when they sign up. And of course the question is of rooftop suitability. You know we are sitting in a massive hotel. I don't think the roof of this building will have space for more than 50, 100 kilowatts of solar because of the way the roof is laid out. Some other advantages uh, it inter of the rooftop segment, seamless integration, it works with the grid, it works with the DG sets, absolutely captive, generated, produce, produced and consumed immediately. So no losses and in our country we have about I think 19% is the average loss includes transmission, theft, wastage, everything. It takes maybe just one month to implement. Even small solar plants give you good amount of savings. We only use what is dead commercial space. So the roof of a hospital or a hotel or a, or a college, uh, the tin roof, the, the metal roofs of factories. So nothing which has commercial value for the client because these are long term you know, uh, projects with very, very long term payback, you know, the life of a solar plant is at least 25 years. And anybody, people are not very happy committing land. So most of the projects happen on the rooftop, which is why it's called the rooftop sector. The technical term of course is distributed solar. For us, it doesn't matter whether it's on the ground or on the roof. We have technologies that does not disturb the business. All of us, it's not just my company where it's all non penetrating technology, whether it's an RCC roof or if it's a metal shed. Uh, it's a modular kind of a structure. Today I have set up a 100 kilowatt plant. Tomorrow if I want to increase this plant to 300, 400, 500, I can easily do that. And you know, uh, the you know, possibilities, this examples, there's RCC roof, there's a carport on the left. The roof was not available, so we created a superstructure on the bottom right hand side. And the top one, it's not very visible, but that's a typical industrial metallic shed. Then we come to, that's so much about rooftop. We talked about the capex, opex. So opex is also what the way we work with it is solar energy, solar power as a service model, wherein the entire investment is done by us. So there is no capital cost or maintenance cost to the user because the entire investment, the choice of what module, what inverter, how to set it up, how to design it, how to lay it out on a building, all of that is mine. So there is no risk for the user here. So the user may be in the business of making shoes or cars. Solar is not their area of expertise. Solar is our area of expertise. So we tell them, you know, you just buy the energy from this plant. 
how this plant is to be made how it is to be sized what technology is to be used leave that to us we are the experts in this area there is a long term price certainty even if it's a 15 20 25 year power purchase agreement the price for the entire period is decided today so obviously we don't have this kind of luxury when we're talking of grid power or even we're talk talking of diesel power the way the pps are structured we ensure that for every unit of solar consumed there is a saving obviously in states of like maharashtra and delhi where tariff is high grid tariff savings are higher in places like maybe telangana andhra relatively savings are lower but we ensure that the tariff escalation is structured in a manner that at all points in time solar power is not more expensive than grid power and most of our plants at the end of the ppa term there is a free transfer so if you got you know the minimum life is 25 years after 25 after 20 we've transferred the plant uh, on the business challenges very quickly there's very little information even today and unfortunately there's a lot of misinformation coming in from this 3 rupees 2. Point whatever 4 6 or whatever those numbers are happening now so even if my client wants a 100 or kilowatt or even a 1 megawatt plant they want those numbers and it's very difficult now sometimes i think perhaps the time when they didn't know anything was better than where things are today because expectations are unrealistic uh we, these are private ppas so one private party signing with us 20 25 even 15 years is too long a contract time that's something else which places a huge, huge uh, hindrance. They say we'll sign for three years and renew. But what happens if you don't renew after three years? After three, if, if three years, if I have to take my asset off from the rooftop, I will lose a lot of money on it. The quantum of savings sometimes is very low, especially for large conglomerates. So imagine like, you know, a 5,000 crore company and I'm setting up a 500 kilowatt plant. Each unit is two rupees cheaper than the grid. Still, you know, the whole year savings is sometimes... 5 lakh, 10 lakh, 15 lakh rupees. So then they get very, you know, disinterested or, you know, why? I'm tying up for 15, 20 years and I'm, I'm not even going to take it up to the management if I'm getting annual savings of 6 lakh rupees. So percentage per unit may be high, but because rooftop sizes are small, usually the total savings per year are small. So we try and tell them, don't look at it as a one year exercise, look at it as a savings over a 20, 25 year period and see how much you because roof uh, the solar price escalation should be lower than how grid price will escalate in the long run state solar policy sometimes you know as uh, we already talked about in the earlier presentation some of them permit some don't some are restrictive some are extremely restrictive and unfriendly and lastly of course there is an inherent risk in this business model which the financiers must have talked about wherein i have put up all the money on day one the asset is on somebody else's premises even access to the uh, asset is basis you know permission from the user and i am depending on regular payments over 20 25 years so we have to choose very very carefully and do a very stringent credit risk assessment and then hope that people will not default and lastly there's a performance risk all of these what generation i'm going to get at a particular spot or a particular rooftop is basis some kind of an assessment of what generation I will get and how well I'll be able to maintain and clean the plant. And if these numbers are off by even as little as 5-7%, because this number, the estimated generation I will get, decides how I will price my product, how I will charge the tariff from the customer, then everything goes for a toss. Implementation, you know, let me not go too much into that. All rooftop plants, we have to do a little bit of optimization in terms of size and layout vis-a-vis uh, -vis the shadow losses that we get. So if we space them out completely, then the capacities are very limited. Uh, the workforce is still not where we want them to be. Safety practices, understanding, all of those norms. And we work very, very hard with our installation contractors to kind of you know bring them up to speed. ONM is going to be a huge challenge in this industry. You know, roofs are scattered all over the country, and we need to keep them clean to ensure that they're generating at their optimum capacity. As obviously cost grid robustness, today we are limiting, you know, all the solar policies of the state say up to X percent, 20 percent, 25 percent, 30 percent of substation capacity. Obviously, there's a reason for that. 
So the way we make the grid on the supply side more robust, the more solar we can push into it. The greatest game changer is not really going to be cost, it's going to be storage. The cost of storage, the accessibility, the ease of storage and the technology and the size of storage. This is really going to change everything. If you're able to crack storage, fossil fuels are history. In terms of policy, we're telling the government go on generation versus capacity. Don't just look at what the installed capacity is, see how much kilowatt hours we're getting out of it. Be very careful on what kind of, you know, SOPs and subsidies. Sometimes they don't help and they just spoil the market. Uh, competitive of solar versus grid, obviously, the entire domestic segment, not just because of credit worthiness, but it's also the amount of the tariff that is there. Net metering, I'll not go on again. Uh, we want to tell the government that if you now looking to incentivize, and they have started doing this already, incentivize the storage because the real growth will come only after we are able to integrate storage along with solar, both on the plant side as well as on the grid side. And somehow to also finally get the small scale MSMEs and domestic customers into, into the uh, rooftop solar gambit, they are completely missing today at least on the OPEX side. They are there on the CAPEX side but completely missing on the OPEX side. Something to help enhance their credit you know some kind of financial credit that is there which will give companies like me the comfort that we can work with them and our credit will remain secure with all those challenges is it possible to grow yes we were just founded in 2013 2014 is when we first commissioned our projects 2015 is when we got invested in we got 150 million of equity and we started getting some big ticket contracts five megawatt walmart uh, acquired six megawatts of sun edison's assets uh, then we committed, uh, did a 4 megawatt uh, solar plant in Bangalore airport, the first one with tracker technology at an airport where we had to convince them doing an anti-glare study that this will not impact the pilots when they are landing and taking off and uh, Seki bids and finally in March 17 we have also commissioned a 40 megawatt open access project. So we were at about 30 megawatts or so in 2016 and we've grown to over 100, we're about 117 today. And so this kind of tells you that with all the challenges and issues that are there, this sector is viable, commercially it makes sense. I know it's early days yet, but the model works. I'll not go into this in detail. Thank you so much.